Hi, I'm Aiman, and welcome back to one of my auto repair videos. I'm sorry, I haven't done this in a long time, but now that we're here, we're here at a convenient time. Because today we're doing a diagnostic video, and not a how-to video, so it's going to be more talking rather than doing. And what we're doing today is how to diagnose what's going wrong when you see a battery, a battery light on your dashboard for a 2003 to 2007 Honda Accord. Technically, it's the same for pretty much any car, but essentially if the battery light shows up, it means there's something wrong with your charging system, which means that either... Well, let me tell you a story actually, and you can skip this if you want, but my brother Amiral, this is Amiral's car by the way, he was going to an interview in New Haven, and he lives in Parkford, which is about an hour drive away. And he got this uh, signal right before he was about to drive, and he texted my dad. He wasn't, he wasn't sure if he should drive it. So my dad said, yeah, there's probably a problem with something about the recharging system, such as the battery, the alternator, or something related to those two. So, however, the car was able to start. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to diagnose what the problem is, whether it be the battery or the alternator that causes this battery light signal. Uh, and the only thing that you need to make sure is that your your car is able to start. So if your car is not already able to start, you need to make sure that you're able to jump start it or that you charge the battery uh, using a charger, which I have here. And you're able to diagnose what the problem is without using any tools. Uh, you don't even have to use a multimeter. And this was supposed to be a multimeter, but we couldn't find it at hand. I said no tools, but that might have been a stretch because you do need to make sure that you have something that can loosen a bolt. What you need to do is you need to loosen the bolt on one of these terminals. So right here, just loosen the bolt. And we actually already have it loosened, so let's get to do like that. All we have to do is you have to take that terminal and just wiggle it off. Now, if the alternator is a problem, then the entire engine will shut off when you take off the terminal. But if the battery is a problem, then when you take off the terminal, everything will still be running. Let's see. As you can see, now that we've taken off the terminal, the alternate, I mean, the engine has completely stopped, which means that the alternator is the problem. Why is this? Now, the reason why is because your battery and your alternator work in conjunction as the car's recharging system. However, the battery is the main component in starting the car, which means that it sends the, the charge in order for your car just to start. So my dad used an example of these old aeroplanes that in order to start them, you would have to crank them and then eventually they sent a charge that would be able to start the entire aeroplane. I'm not sure if that example will be relevant to you guys, but essentially this battery right here just sends the charge to start the car. The battery then starts the starter, which rotates the engine, and then the engine then rotates this alternator belt right here, which then spins the alternator. Then the rest of the charge goes back to the battery. But let's talk about the alternator here. So the alternator, its job is both to recharge the battery and also to power the other electrical devices such as the radio and the lights. This means that if the alternator stops working, most of the power, all of the power for the engine will have to rely on the battery. When the power for the battery runs out, everything in the car will stop. All right. All right, so we have my brother Miro right here oh, and we want to show him how, exactly how we're doing it. Oh, okay. I just saw a spark there, but we're gonna put the negative terminal back on and we're gonna start the car. And then we're gonna show a mural exactly how we're doing this. Alright. So Amiro, all you have to do is loosen one of the terminals and then take them off. So I'm focused. So on the body you have the two terminals, just take one of them off. And if you take if you take them off and it stops working entirely, that, that means the alternator is the problem. But if you take one of them off and it keeps running, that means the battery is the problem. So what does that mean? Which one's the problem? I know it's cold, but the alternator. Yeah, it's the <laughs> alternator. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Let's demonstrate with my dad's Honda Civic. So all I have to do is start the car. Now we've already loosened the terminal, so all you have to do is pull it out. Now keep in mind that nothing, everything is working fine. So, if we pull it out, 
you see that we have the terminal pulled out and everything's still running, which means that neither of the components are damaged or that the battery is faulty, but we're pretty sure that's not. All right, I know I said no tools, but just for sake of reference, and if you want to check and you have tools, using a multimeter, we can actually diagnose the problem. So using this 12 volt battery, if we put the uh, terminals up to the, if we put the points up to the terminals, we should get a reading of 14.4 volts if the alternator is working. So the alternator is working, and you can see that the reading is around 14.4 volts. And this is on a working alternator Honda Civic, uh, no, Jasmine Tech, doesn't matter. But on a Honda Accord, but if the alternator is not working, okay. You see that only reads 12 volts. However, keep in mind that that voltage could be your battery. That, that voltage is your battery. So it could be lower if your battery isn't fully charged. So we're gonna continue the discussion inside because it is cold. But I should mention that the reason that we're doing this video is because right now, it's my dad, according to my dad, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity because dead alternators are not a dime a dozen. So the fact that this is happening, is it's a rare chance for us to cover this type of video. So, we're gonna continue. I'll see you inside. Alright, so I'm back. Um, in my last clip, I said I'd be talking more about the alternator inside. But, some things came up. I was so busy, so we couldn't do it last night. So here we are at the next day. And we actually, I actually just came home from working at the uh, Yale University Peabody Museum. Uh, and we're actually replacing the alternator. So you can see right here, it has a new What's it called? A new shine. The word for whatever the word for shine is, but it has a different look and you can tell that it's new. And we've also done a video on how to actually replace the alternator on my channel that I think has like 10,000 views, so it must be positive. So go check that out if you have time. But we're actually going to continue talking about the alternator and the battery system uh, inside because it is getting cold outside. All right, so we're back in the house now. So. Now we're going to talk a bit more about the process and a few more other things. So if I didn't explain it better outside, here's basically the process. You have, you have the battery. I'm just, I'm just going to draw a regular battery, right? This battery then spins the starter motor. Let's say it just looks like a cylinder, right? It's not actually what a starter looks like. A starter is essentially just a motor. What the motor does is it spins the engine. Now the engine, I, I don't know how to draw an engine. I'm just going to draw the uh, intake manifold and the four pistons. And then it has a ton of wires. But anyway, the, <laughs> the starter cranks the engine. So the engine starts spinning and inside the engine is the crankshaft. What the crankshaft does is it connects to a belt. So this belt right here spins and as this belt spins, it goes to the alternator. Now the alternator, if you saw it earlier, kind of looks like uh, another cylinder. Maybe it looks like uh, a fan with lines around it. But anyway, what this alternator does is, let's draw a car at the bottom. Now this car is meant to represent, instead of the car, it's actually meant to represent the electrical components inside it, such as the lights, the the fans, the um, those are the first things I think of electrical components, maybe the PCM, the the oh yeah, the uh, maybe the cigarette lighter, the uh, the charger, the radio, radio. There I'm going. It charge so pretty much any electrical components that you can think of in the car, the alternator can power that. So what it does is as it's spinning, it generates current because of electromagnetic uh, electromagnetism, and as it generates current, it sends that uh, current to the car. At the same time, the alternator also alternates into charging the battery. So the battery can actually recharge as the car is running. So this entire process is like a cycle, but at the same time, the alternator is also providing power to the car. I also mentioned during the video 
that if the alternator is not working, then the battery can provide current to the car. Now, I, I think I said the engine, but what I actually meant was that it can provide power to the electrical components of the car. So when the alternator isn't working, the battery can also power the electrical components. All right, so that's basically how the car battery system works. So you have a battery that goes to a starter, that cranks the engine, that spins a belt, that spins the alternator. So that's why you can tell that the problem when you see a battery signal is either the battery or the alternator. Because if it was the starter, your car wouldn't be able to start. If it was the engine, there would be a whole other slew of problems. And if it, and it also could be your alternator belt. But telling if it's the alternator belt is pretty easy. You, you probably hear a noise. So therefore, the obvious uh, culprits are either the battery or the alternator. I also mentioned. I should also mention that if you're trying to do the method that we did by um, taking off the terminals in order to see if it's either of these, you need to have the battery fully charged. Uh, and in order to do that, you can either, or you have to have the battery fully charged or you can use a jump starter. Um, we don't have a jump starter though. Um, what, we, we do have jump starting cables, the big heavy ones, but what I meant to say is we don't have those tiny kits uh, like my friend Hatem does that you can just uh, you can hold them in your hand and they actually can jumpstart your car for you instead of having to connect it to a different car. But anyway, um, you can also, there's kind of product placement, but you can also recharge it using what we have here. I guess in a sense this is a handheld charger, but this is an Optima charger. It's really meant for um, AGM batteries because AGM batteries are these absorbent glass mat, absorbent glass mat a a AGM batteries that can't be charged with regular methods. So the, Opti the Optima charger is really meant for the things like the Prius uh, that we can charge the batteries with. So this is what we have right here. This is how we got the battery for uh, Amiral's Honda Accord to be uh, full enough to do the method. So to reiterate, this battery recharger can recharge both deep cycle batteries and regular batteries. Now deep cycle batteries are just batteries that can last longer and recharge for l much longer than regular batteries. So we're going to be doing a separate video on the battery recharger. So go check that out when you can. Um, but for now, let me see if there's anything else. Oh yeah, so I guess this is the end of the video. I might as well mention, you might be curious about the security system right here. Uh, we've done a many videos on the uh, high CU uh, cameras. So if you want to, go check them out. They, they're uh, pretty interesting actually. Um, a lot of finagling with them, finagling with. And you can even see the cars outside. <laughs> uh, you might see this car right here. We're doing some repairs on it because the wheel actually spun off. Um, that's my brother Oscar's car. I actually did a video about it. It's more of a PSA about how safety is really important when you're dealing with cars. So go check that out and I'll see you there. But I'm Iman and thanks for watching. Please like, comment, comment, subscribe, and look at other videos on I and Iman. This explanation was really long. I didn't expect it to be that long, and it doesn't even look that well drawn, but I, I really hope that you could understand it. So go check out the video on the um, recharger, and I'll see you there. So signing out. Peace.